Hello, I'm Wayne Kerr and welcome to Sky Sports News. Now, recently the football world was in shock when Bude FM announced his resignation from Birmingham City. After eight seasons and many trophies, it looked like the young, exciting team he had assembled was on the brink of finally pushing for the Premier League title. He apparently had a great relationship with the board and the fans, so it came as a shock to most people that he would want to leave. Not me though, I mean Birmingham's a dump. In my top 10 shithole cities of England, it's easily number one by a country mile. Things took a surprising turn when Bude was instantly announced as the new manager of third division Italian side Pro Vercelli. Especially as he'd stated in his leaving speech he needed a break from football to pursue other interests. Now it's come to light that Bude had no intention of stepping away from football or Birmingham City. He was in fact pushed out by Birmingham City's co-owner and former NFL star Tom Brady. After it was reported that Bood FM had started dating Tom's ex-wife Giselle. Although representatives from both parties say it was just an innocent photograph, could there be more to it? It seems that way, as Bood's not only lost his job with Birmingham City, but has moved to a small club in Italy based in Vicelli, close to where Giselle owns a holiday home. All I can say is that if it is true, what has Giselle been smoking? Weed? Crack? She must be high. I mean, come on, Bood. Talk about punching above your weight. Next up, we have an exclusive interview with the England manager Gareth Southgate. He'll be talking us through his sidewards, backwards, passing masterclass training routines that's got him all the way to the Euro 2024 final. For now, that's enough from me. I'm off to see Sophia Vergara, see if she fancies a date. If Boo can bag himself Giselle, then I'm sure Sophia will be well up for some sweet, sweet Wayne loving. Hello, I'm Bood and welcome to a very early morning here in my office, my brand new office at Pro Vicelli. As always, thanks for joining me. It's massively appreciated. Make sure you do all the good stuff to support me and my new little series by hitting the thumbs up, getting involved in the comments, subscribe if you're new and hit that bell and you'll never miss anything I do like this. So yeah, a new series, a new challenge. It's a team I've had on a list that I've created a long time ago, but it was a, um, a friend of the channel, Eddie, who reminded me of Pro Vicelli. I think that's how you say it. Um, I just thought it was a great idea for many, many reasons. So thank you for checking it out. Hopefully you'll stick with this and the series. We'll see where it goes. I'm going to try and make as many as I can. I'm going to go hardcore over the next four weeks before I go away for two weeks to France. We'll see what we can do. Hey, I'll try my best. As always, thanks for joining me. Your view is the most important thing. So let's take a look at this tiny little team from Italy with great history. So Pro Vicelli, a team some of you may not have heard of and a team that plays its football in the third tier of Italian football has an amazing history. Plus, I love the fact they've got a St. George's cross on their badge, which is quite fitting because somehow my country, England, at the moment of filming, just about still in the Euros, so just got to play Spain, we'll see what happens. But anyway, they were founded in 1892. Now, it was one of the most successful teams in the early football era of Italy. Now, the history of this club is fantastic. Fantastic. They have seven top flight titles, not Serie A titles, but top flight titles, and they are recognized as equal to any top flight title in Italy. And we're one of the most successful teams in the early era of Italian football until a lot of the big clubs came up and took over and then a slow decline. I don't think they've been in Serie A since the 1930s. They've even been in Serie D multiple times, losing their professional status. But here they are, and I hopefully will take them back. I do love looking at this. It is quite strange when you see how many titles they've won. They are joint fifth in all-time titles with Torino and Bologna. But can we emulate those great old teams of the early 1900s and take this team not only just out of Serie C and into Serie A, but to challenge for that eight title? And that's why I've called this series the Hunt the Eight. So let's get looking at this club, FC Pro Vicelli 1892. Now. This is the main page. That Awake Kit is a little bit special, I cannot lie. Um, like I said, I do love the logo. I love, a lot of um, St. George's Cross is in Italy. I'm guessing it means something different. Let me know if you know why there's so many. Um, but it's obviously the flag of my country, England. In episode two, the final will probably have been played. Could be very sad or could be elated. Probably sad. Anyway, enough of that. Um, here we are with the club, of course, our manager, and we play at the Silvio Piola, which I think is named after one of their famous old players. Now, not too long ago, they've had a couple of stints and a decent long stint 
in Serie B. And then I've obviously crashed back down to Serie C and that's where we find them right now. And apparently the season before this, they finished 15th. It's just got that history behind it. And I love things like this. A classic booed rebuild, it feels like, where, you know, I've, I've done Fallen Giants over the years, but I do like a club like this as this old history. And I've kind of been forgotten in time. I kind of bring that back. It's a good challenge. I love Italian football and football manager. So we don't own the stadium. It's council owned and it's average looking apparently, but I like it. It's got a nice little stadium. It's got character. It looks like it's in a beautiful place. It won't be a bad place to live and do your football, play your trade. So no, I'm, I'm excited. Hopefully we can either develop it or maybe build one, but you never know where the series is going to go. I don't know. A bit different in Italy, especially in money compared to England. We have a lot of players here. They do a lot of loaning and there's always a lot of freebies. Italian clubs always have a lot of affiliates. I mean, Christ. Apparently Juve. Oh, well, Juve's bitch. I played the full season. I didn't realise that. I don't know why I didn't realise that, but maybe that's something we could tap into, especially if we get to Serie B in that loan market. And there they are. Seven titles. Wow. Do you think it's been a hundred years pretty much since they won the seventh? I'll only be so we can win an eight, if at all. So then there's work to do, but obviously this is the early days, the level we're at, the money, and so on. I can't do everything straight away. It's going to be a process, but this is my staff. I was going to try and tweak it a bit and um, see what I could do. And this is the squad I'm starting with. And as always, you're going to have loads of loans, as you can see, loads of them. I was going to make quite a few changes and I'm pretty sure I'll bring in about 13 new players. Now the money ain't bad, surprisingly. So what I wanted to do is try and push as much of that into the wages. And I was just going to go out there. Basically, like I said, in other series, sign a load of free stuff that looks good. Basically pick up a load of shit that nobody wants. Throw it all at the wall and see what sticks. But I mean, this club has done a lot of business already. So I was going to add to this lots of loans. Look at that. Lots of players leaving on a free. Now this is before I've touched the thing. I've obviously just took the job and we put it to be sixth. Kind of better that with anything. Yeah, so push it up to fifth with my many um, transfers. Cut a few players. Uh, I think I loaned one. Just signed a lot of freebies. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Can't wait. I mean, this is the kind of level I love in a way because you don't know what to expect. There's fine margins at this level in Italy. You just got hope that you can do your best get us out of it I want to get out of this straight away and to guarantee that we'd have to win it win it you go straight to Serie B if you don't win it look at that I mean the playoffs are insane you can get into the first round of the playoffs if you finish 10 whoop whoop hey just finished with Birmingham could never get full yellow made quite good success there just be able to do this you know me if you don't know me I love staff I know I always say this but it makes me happy inside. But yeah, look, lots of freebies. Lots of them. Um, I think it's 13. Loaned someone from Lazio. And the rest are just three guys that I've picked up. So I thought, you know, it's too many players. Not going to know a lot of them. I'll just try and show you my best team. We have David, with a little E on the end. That's what I say. Uh, Mastrantonio, 19-year-old goalkeeper on loan from Roma. I mean, is my favourite. Now, my assistant likes other players. There's other players that apparently work better there, but as I went through the season, I felt like Roberto Lezzi did me a good job with his right foot at left back. So he was my favorite left back. At right back, Francesco Rodio. I love these names. Can't pronounce half of them, but I love them. At centre half, we have Agostino Camigliano on loan from Ancono. Ancona, there you go. Get there in the end. Um, decent player. No, I really like this guy, but he's going to be opting out. Not my fault. He wants to leave. Um, but I liked him this season. Julio Perodi. Reminds me of Peroni. Makes me want to drink, even though it's early. In the middle, one of our own. Well, he's from Tunisia, but he's one of our own players. Uh, Alessandro Luati. Yeah, this is the level we're at. I like him. Right then. <laughs> he's 30 years old. He's one of our own. Uh, new to the club. Massimiliano Busilato. Massimiliano Busilato. That's what I'm going with. Sorry if the accent's racist. 
I get accused of being racist if I try accents. Not gonna do a Scouse one for some weird reason. So I've got an AMC in the place to be in this series. Busting out the wraps. But I've got a decent player here, 21 years old, on loan from Crotone. Is that how you say it? Apparently. Uh, 21 years old, but he's decent. He's gonna slot in, hopefully, and do well. On the right, we're getting Flash. New boy, experienced, 33 years old. And Brazilian, Diego Farias. On the right wing, he plays for me though. Another new boy I've picked up, and my left winger, 21 year old Italian, Matteo Maggio. And then another new boy, who's been around the blocks in the lower levels of Italian football, still only 23 years old, it's Alessio Nepe. And you know when some players are just, you just love, I love Nepe. So pre-season was left to be what it was, right? It's a bit hit and miss. Obviously we played some big teams, got spanked. Played some teams I've never heard of and did okay-ish at times. It's a work in progress. A lot of new players have come in. There's already a lot of new players here from the previous regime. And that's what I like about saves like this, especially at this level where whatever happens next year, all the loans will be leaving. There'll be players, because I've signed people on minimal contracts anyway, people are believing and this is big turnaround and I love that so a big job this year is to do a bit more scouting try and get a bit more knowledge and try and pick up those best players that are just getting discarded around Italy forget the broader picture of Europe for now I'm quite happy building Italian teams with Italian players who can drag us through the shit and hopefully get us to where we need to be for minimal money to save money and to build for the future that is the boot way that is a boot man oh yes oh yes by the 1st of January we were top of the league I just, I've said this a million times, I think when you're up against a computer and it's fine margins, I think you'll always beat it. Because you're human and you make better decisions than if you simulate. I, I think you do. When you're, there, when you're there going through the process, you make better decisions. Now I've played this and I can't wait for it now. In bits here and there over the last two or three weeks. So it's been quite frustrating getting through it because I was still doing Birmingham, which I was fully concentrated on. Now Birmingham's ended. When I get to the second season of this, I can just full steam it and that's my plan. Um, but I was enjoying it. I kept coming back to it and going, oh, hi, doing this, I'm doing all right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, it's been brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed this level of football in Italy and building a team like this in Italy. So can I actually be invincible? I mean, that would be a good start to any job, wouldn't it? But at the minute I am. Um, and, you know, you start to feel like you can't lose. Even when you're drawing, you still feel like you'll be okay. Or, you know, you'll come back. Or you won't concede another. That's what it felt like at this moment. Not bad. And obviously, you're getting injuries, you're getting fatigue. Um, <clears throat> a lot of these players, you know, who you know who they are. They're playing a lot of games. So, you know, you're kind of using the squad as much as you can. But I was still more focused on just the best team whenever I could. Just get as many points as we could. My main aim was to win the league. Get straight out of it. I'd love to get straight to Sevilla B. To, that's a good level. Sevilla B. Some fantastic clubs up there. That'll be a great challenge. Can't wait for that. So that was my focus. And, you know, just use these players while I can because a lot of them will piss off probably. I mean, I've arranged it by their expiry date on their contract. And look, got all them loan players. A lot of players I signed on one year deals. I mean, look at that. So I'm only going to only end up with what? That amount of players anyway. Some of them would be unhappy, I'd probably cut some of them, might get some for them, even if it's 10 grand, I don't care. Because uh, I love building, building teams. Well then, it's now the 3rd of March, and as you can see, we're not going to be invincible. That would have been a nice little touch, wouldn't it? But we're not going to be invincible. We did have a bit of a rough patch at one stage, and I started to think, I hate this game sometimes. How, do, how, how can you be so great? Nothing really changes, and then you go so shit for a bit. But it happened. So these are the results, but I've now added in the Copper Italia C. Right, which is cool, and something I thought, you know what, should be winning this the way we are in the league, we should be winning it. And you know, I think you've seen all these results, haven't you? We come down, look at us doing well in the Copper Italia, see, and then look at this that drawing, I get beat, and that first defeat, I think maybe it's a psychological thing, I don't know. The boys finally realized they're not invincible, and we went straight into this game. And got beat but you know we bounce back but then we lose again i get to trento Ooh. 
Um, we start winning again, but we just couldn't do enough in the second leg. So I got knocked out in the semi-final of the Copper and Sally AC. And there's still quite a few games to go. I'm eight points clear, so it's still quite close. But I've got the leading goal scorer in the league. Second best player. Who's also the leader in the assists as well. So, no, it, it was fantastic. I mean, I think the thing that hurt me, and I probably could have been a little bit better, is if I was just playing this. Obviously, because I was just jumping in. I don't know, you kind of come out of it, don't you? And come back into it. And I was just like focusing on Birmingham. But yeah, pretty chuffed. But we need to keep pushing because it needs to be first spot. So yeah, the squad arranged by average rating. But you know, there's a lot of players, isn't there? I mean, there is a ton of players at these clubs and I, I do want to clear it out when I get to um, the Sevier B. I'll show you the rest. But under 20s, I mean, I ain't done that. I think I might have done some of it. Look how many of them are loaned out. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely bonkers. I mean, look at the potential of some of them. Who's Joshua with the prior? I mean, he should be playing for me, surely. Australian. Wouldn't look that good, though. Well, it's the 7th of April. Why are we here? Well, it's not for a cup game. Because we got knocked out in the semi-finals, which is still respectable, don't get me wrong. No, it's for a league game. Now, we are still top of the league by 11 points now. Not lost another game. We're doing really well. We're strong. And we've got a playoff spot. One of the many, many, many playoff spots. Look at this. It's just this boring zone, isn't it? 11th to 15th so yeah recently since we got knocked out of the cup they just got back to form but form in a more booed way that I really enjoy you know what I mean look at some of the results especially the last two games for fun <laughs> let's hold the live comms like this let's keep this theme it's way more entertaining and look at that 4-3 as well so we're going to be playing Pergolatese Pergolatese sounds like Italian dish you know at a restaurant and um, we're going to be playing them away in a live comp if we win we become Serie C slash A champions we also have Serie B and there's some cracking teams in Serie B don't forget Serie C I think I started at this level did I start Serie D when I did my Palermo save that was a great save love that and this is Serie B and I'm hoping hoping Venezia stay where they are because I had another series with them and I love that too I want to be in that division playing against Palermo and Venezia two fantastic clubs that I grew very fond of I've actually got a Venezia shirt and if you're wondering that's the big one and dream can't we will it ever become a reality right it's time for these boys who are available to get this club on the right track one win and I can forget about the rest of the league and B team it and world champions we're in Serie B let's get into the game So welcome to the Giuseppe Voltini Stadium. I think it said it was quite quick. Quite like that formation. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. There's not many people here. I quite like it. There's my boys. That's the team I've been able to pick for this game. Can we show up? I really want a thriller. I love some of the thrillers I've been involved with with this club. I want another one. Let's go ahead and start. Now, of course, we could lose. We could lose. But we're on a great run. I'm feeling confident. We could lose, though. But this is going to be the live comment. I'm going to have to see... Um, I'd have to jump in for highlights of other games, but you know, I think it's just a matter of time. The amount of games we've got left, surely, just one win away. So I feel very confident. I'd like to do it in this one, of course. But like I said, I've enjoyed it. I enjoy this kind of level of football, especially in Italy. It's good. I've always found it easy to get through an Italian save because of a lot of the loans, there's a lot of freebies. There's a lot of, there's not much difference sometimes in the clubs until you get to the top level. Um, but then it's all about us building something. And if you can do it with a team like Venezia, I mean, oh, oh, oh man, why can't I do it with a team like this? I mean, when I was Venezia in that series, which I loved, we're starting at a higher level. I think we Serie B, weren't we? Or was it Serie A when they first got into it? I can't remember, but you know, similar kind of stadium, similar kind of size club in a way. But the, I, was, I had an advantage of starting higher with better players. But when I did Palermo, that was different because I think we were, I'm sure I was in Serie D at the beginning. Big club though, big stadium, just low level. So, you know, I had advantages in a different way. This club is lower players, lower stadium. So it's like probably more challenging, but I'm really up for it. Can't wait. Like I said, I'm just going to plow through it. I'm going to play it hardcore. No relaxing, every spare minute. 
getting through it, getting through it, trying to get out as many episodes before we go on holiday. Right, come on. That's been all those, but we need to turn this into a goal. Here we go, Luwate. Gets it straight back. Whip it straight back in. Turn, shoot. Oh my God. Right, come on. Some nice stuff here, passing it beautifully. And then Maggio, just let the ball run away from his feet. The build-up play to that was outstanding. Oh, 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 come on. We've got a corner somehow. I don't know how it just cut straight to a corner. I don't know how we've not scored yet. I swear to God, it's coming. Surely, it's coming. Take it. Got to touch on some of these today. And the ball's in the feet and just running away and they're just like, mm. what's happened? Oh, not with Leslie though. Go on, lad. Barrius. What's inside? Just have a shot. Oh my God. It feels like the longest half of all time. And do you know what? I've only got it in key highlights. And yes, I'm a bit tired. I've had to get very up very early today because I couldn't film yesterday. I wanted to film on Friday. I couldn't do it. I had to get my mate Jamie around to play Wayne Kerr, which he hates doing it, I think. He's never that happy about it. And he had to learn a lot of lines this time. He's always been grumpy. He? Hello, it's Wayne Kerr. Welcome to Sky Sports News. Miserable. He's a, he's a miserable git, but I love him very much like a brother. We grew up two houses apart with the same age, went to school together, and now it's 1 0. Except now he still lives in his house with his mum and dad down the street. And I now live in a new house up the street. Boom's still down there. Grown up with the wife and kids. He's still got his bedroom. I don't think he'll watch this. He'll probably watch himself. He won't watch the whole episode. He never has. He has zero interest in football manager. He thinks he's absolutely shite. He has no idea, does he? No idea, no clue. He's still playing FIFA. Like that's a good game. You know what I mean? Anyway, it's 1-0 up. And I feel like I've got it on the full 90 minute highlights. But I haven't watched the second half. There'll be nothing going on. Bet you. But, you know, a bit of football for you. Something to watch, first game. Can't jump out though, I can't wait. Can you hear that? Pen. Pad. You see it. I love it. I'm old school, I know you can do things on a computer. I like to write it down. <laughs> write a squad list, get them players in. We'll start filling them slots. See what's available. Nice little scout list. Right, come on. Maggio, decent touch. Decent touch this time. He looked like a Joshua Xerxes, didn't he there? Well, it's our time. It's 2-0. We're dominating. Probably should be more. But yeah, I think we should be rocking on through to the business side. That's a lot. Of, happens a lot with series like this. You've got to get through an episode or two before you get to the cup bit. This is a building phase. Get out of the shit league into Serie B. And exciting times could be ahead. So yeah, at work, I'm a bus driver. Um, back on normal buses. So, you know, back to crazy town, like I say. Looking at time on this. Told you, nothing will happen in this hour. Pulling out of a bus stop, there's no one there. And out of nowhere, this white van comes racing round you. They do it all the time. They can't be behind a bus. It was his fault. He was being dangerous. And he beat me. So beeped him back. Right? Got to the lights. It's not a man, it's a woman. He jumps out of the van. It's about four foot. And she looks like a mixture of someone who's anorexic and on crack, right? Off a tit. She looks like she was off her head. And she's screaming at me. Come on. Get out your bus. I'll knock you out. Like, I'm just sat there like that. Is this real? Start laughing. Come on, I'm six foot three male. I'll never touch her. You're only thinking... What is wrong with her? And that made her even worse. She starts calling me a nonce, screaming red off. Then she sits at the lights, laughing dead loud. I'm not going to let you through. And then as soon as the lights went to red, she bombed it through, thinking I was bothered. That happens all the time, that if you do something and they blame you. But if I sit in front of you like, I'm not going to let you move, Mr. Busman. And you sat there like, I don't care. I'm getting paid. To sit here doesn't make any difference to us. You know what I mean? But I'm like driving thinking, in my car, nothing ever happens to me. Not Even if it, I do something that's my fault, I never get anyone screaming at me. But people just see you on a bus and know you can't chase them, you can't get out. You've got a camera on you and a microphone. 
and it, they feel like it gives them license to be as angry and abusive as whatever because they, they feel safe and secure and they've scored but in reality I want to go and punch him demanded more and I've also brought off a lot of the players who weren't playing too great that wasn't too bad from Rizzo the Rizzo the Razor hit me with the flavour who, who sang that? Wu-Tang innit? I think I've done it before a bit of Wu-Tang clan used to love a bit of Wu-Tang who's that band I found last night? how have I never heard of him? I am old they do different songs. Oh my god. Alright. I found one song, I swear to god, you gotta check it out. I sent it to Jamie saying maddest song or video I've ever watched. Falling in reverse. They're very versatile, but fucking brilliant. Falling in reverse, and this song's called Ronald. Look for Falling in Reverse. Song called Ronald. And watch the whole video, please. It is next level. I'm an old school rocker, a bit of hip hop, I love all that. But Limp Biscuit, that's a different level. Amazing. So yeah, that's my recommendation for you today. Anyway, 2-1, it's quite close. It should be like 8-0. I'll be honest with you. But we should be doing this. There we go, we got the win, which means we should have won the league. But we're not getting a trophy ceremony, but I don't give a shit. Happy days, we're getting out of this league. We've also had the budget set, which are outstandingly brilliant. I mean, that wage budget is what I need. I think it'll be enough because it's all going to be free biz and loans. So I've got three games left to play. Top spot is secured. I'm going to give a lot of the other guys a chance, a farewell. I don't give a shit. I'm not chasing invincibility anymore. And then we'll jump in at the end and see what happens. So I have done forward a bit and I did want to go a little bit further so we could wrap this thing up. But there's a something I, it's either new or I didn't realise, I've forgotten about. It's been a while since I played at this level. Um, but we drew game and we won our last two in thrilling, thrilling fashion again, 5-3 and 3-2. We'll have to find out who comes up with us in the next one. But obviously there's three divisions at this level. Now Spal have won the B division and Crotone have won the C division, which apparently means, as you've seen, we're playing in the Super Copper de Serie C. Didn't expect this, didn't know about this. So I'm going to wrap it up here though and we can find out how I got on in this going against the other champions, which is quite cool. Nice little touch. I'd like to win it, we'll see. Um, in the next one, what I can share with you though is the results of the Italia Serie C Cup. There you go. That is the end of episode one, season one. Hopefully you enjoyed that with Pro Vicelli. We are just getting the ball rolling there, but now we're off to Serie B. Things will get real there, and I can't wait to see what kind of team I can put together. What we will do in the next one is I will run through the whole squad and show you every player, hopefully. Um, and we'll see what we can do. I'm very excited. Um, honestly, I can't wait. Can't wait. But I'm working tomorrow. I'm working Sunday for the first time in four months. Oh, well, like I said, I will plough through it as quickly as possible. As always, thanks for joining me. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, get involved in the comments, subscribe if you're new, and hit that bell, and you will never miss anything to do. But most of all, thank you for your view. So yeah, in the next one, seven you be. We'll see how we get on in that super copper. Quite excited. I might do that right now um, and get to work right now before the kids wake up but yeah thank you honestly stay happy stay safe and hopefully as well next time i see you i'll be a very happy man oh we're gonna lose two finals on the bounce i mean i think the, i feel like the whole world wants us to lose but you never know you never know football's a funny old game anyway i'll see you later i'm booed bye, -bye.